Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Sutton's Valley Permaculture. Right behind me here is my kitchen garden. And as you can see, it's not always pretty. In spring, we've got lots of flowers everywhere, but at the moment, I've got nets over fruiting plants. I've got grasses growing and seeding plants everywhere. Today, we're gonna to take a closer look at the kitchen garden, do a quick harvest, and I'm also gonna tidy up that problem grassy area. First up, we're gonna take a look at my berries. Behind me here under the nets are my boysenberry plants, which are mostly finished off. So we're gonna be taking the net off that today. We're gonna to take a look at the strawberries, the blueberries, and my raspberry plants. So just sneaking in through here, through most of my grassy mess, we've got my boysenberry patch, which has had the net on it for few weeks now and I've been harvesting quite a lot of boysenberries but I think they're mostly finished now so we can take this netting off. You can see here there's one or two boysenberries still hanging on. When it was in full production this was actually loaded. I really love having these in the freezer. They're great to grab out in winter, make into a pudding or just roast some berries or just have them freshly thawed with a bit of yogurt. Right now these bushes are putting on some vigorous growth, which makes me wonder if you can use these leaves for tea. I might investigate that. Anyway, I'll be pruning all of these so that this bush doesn't take over my whole garden. With it uncovered, the birds can get in and I'm quite happy to share any of these little berries that are left with my little feathered friends. So now we can move on to the strawberry patch, which has been providing quite a number of strawberries and I've been harvesting lots, but I am finding I'm competing with the local blue tongue lizard population, which has been really enjoying these strawberries and I'm finding they're really fat Whenever I'm out here harvesting strawberries, I come across these lizards. At the moment, there's not so many strawberries on the plants. I find they kind of go through periods where there's just heaps and at other times when there's not so many. I think the birds have had a, a bit of a go at that one. And what's happening here? So I might get a few out of here today, but I've already got a lot of strawberries in the freezer. Now just behind me here is what we're going to harvest today and that's some of my blueberries. Now it's a must to keep these nets on them at this time of year and even with the nets on them I do find the birds finding their way in. At the moment I'm finding it challenging to net this blueberry in particular because I've got these raspberry canes coming up through here that I don't really want to damage but once I've got this net off the blueberry that will certainly give a bit more space to these growing raspberry plants. We're just going to start the harvest today with these three plants, which are the ones that I moved from pots into the ground. So they're really just still re-establishing, although they have produced quite um, a lot of the blueberries. I'll leave a link to that video if you're interested in seeing it. I always have to hold it down with something. Now this end blueberry only has a few left on it, so that one's nearly finished off. Now this one here still has quite a few little blueberries that we can harvest today. Blueberry picking is a little bit tedious, but it's so worth it to have a freezer full of these delicious berries. That's those three plants harvested. In the earlier days, this jar would be full from those three plants, but getting later in the season, this is what I've got, which is still a great harvest. So I'll cover them over and get onto the other plants. This blueberry bush here gives me the biggest, juiciest, most lovely blueberries. And uh, if I knew the variety, I'd let you know, and I'd also get some more of these plants. So do your research on your blueberry plants and you might just get a real winner like this one. 
I tend to hold a jar between my knees so that I don't have to worry about putting a basket down everywhere and it works quite well and makes the harvest just that little bit quicker. You do have to be fairly careful doing this. If you knock the right ones off, you can always pick them up, but if you knock these little pink ones off, uh, it's the end of them and they won't uh, develop. So you have to be pretty careful really. That fourth plant is harvested and the jar is getting really full with juicy, delicious blueberries. We'll move on to this plant here. Now I haven't harvested for a few days and we've had some warm weather, which is when you find these blueberries really start to, to ripen up. So this plant has got lots of blueberries on that we can harvest today. I often listen to a podcast while I'm out here because I do like to multitask. You could just as equally listen to some lovely music as well. Or you could listen to the wind in the trees and the birds singing. That's not so bad either. That's all I'm taking today. It looks like there's still lots there, but some of them aren't quite ripe yet. So I'll come back again probably in a couple of days time to see what else I can harvest. Now, just while we're here around the blueberries, I was just gonna show you my chocolate mint and my spearmint. They get walked on quite a bit while we're harvesting these blueberries and they're kind of squashed by the, the timber holding down the, the netting. But once I finish the harvest, all of this area will just spring back to life. There's also some raspberry plants that are coming up sort of in this area here, but I'm not so worried about it because I know once it has the pressure off it, it will just start to grow and there's still plenty of time left to get a decent raspberry harvest. Now we'll just sneak in here for the last blueberry plant. Now this is the blueberry that seems to have bird pressure on it all the time. They can sneak in because I can't close it up well enough with the raspberries all poking through. But as you can see, there's still plenty of blueberries that they've left for me. Sometimes with the netting, the branches do get a little bit broken, but a um, little bit of pruning is not going to hurt anything. So I'm going to stop with my two jars of blueberries. It takes some time to pick this many and I'm usually over it by the time I've filled a couple of jars. I'll catch up with the rest of the blueberries in a couple of days time. So let's go and have a look at the rest of the garden and see what's happening. I really love the flowers on the um, mint plants. This is on one of my spearmint plants. And right next to the mint plants is my pond where I've also got some lovely flowers. The small leafed lily plant produces this beautiful little yellow flower and I'm not sure of the variety. I was given the lily by a friend. I also have a different variety of lily which produces a bigger flower. There's no flowers here at the moment. And the fish really enjoy swimming through this sort of shaded area and finding plenty to eat. I don't throw any food into this pond. They just find whatever in this space. Now, unfortunately, I'm having an issue with this pond. It has got a plastic liner and my little puppies have put a hole in it somewhere. So I'm always having to top this up, especially in summer so that these fish and plants survive. So that's not ideal. So it will be on the list of things to do once summer's over, I think, and uh, we'll get that fixed. Now over the other side of my pond, in my former raspberry patch, I've got lots of lettuce that's starting to seed and the birds will enjoy eating that and I'll be able to harvest some and spread them around. I've got my lemon balm, which I have had one big harvest from and that's starting to seed as well. Right over the back there is 
a black currant plant which has been in for four years and it's getting quite sizable and it's had some really great black currants on it. Right next to my black currant plant I have a John Gold apple tree which was overloaded last year which might be why it hasn't produced any fruit this year. Um, it's having a rest and I'm hoping it will return with fruit next season. But right under it, we've got some lemon balm, there's Swiss chard. The Swiss chard from last season has gone to seed and this is what the crimson rosellas particularly love to feast on and they've been really going to town on the plants in this area. Now in amongst the weedy plants, we've got calendula, which is also going to seed. And that will drop the seed in place here and create more calendula plants. But often I'll just come pick a seed head or two and take that out into my swales and spread that round where I hope plants will start to grow. And usually I find some are successful. Now if you didn't want them to go to seed so much, you can do a lot of deadheading and get rid of the flower head and the plant will just produce flowers for longer. But um, I really don't have time to be doing that and I quite like being able to spread calendula around everywhere. Lining the side of my kitchen garden, I've got lots of comfrey. And while these purple flowers are beautiful and the bees love them, the presence of the flowers really is an indication to me that it's time to chop these plants down and use it as mulch. If I did leave it any longer, Lots of seeds start to grow and I risk spreading comfrey around everywhere where I won't need it. Or alternately, as someone suggested to me in a previous video, wait till the seeds are there, cut the comfrey and put it where you would like comfrey to start to grow and you'll definitely get comfrey growing. My kiwi trellis is slowly taking shape. Bit by bit, we're getting there on this project. The kiwi is also slowly getting there. I'm seeing signs that it's starting to take off. I've recently put a whole pile of compost around it and some wood chips and have been diligent with watering it and I think that's starting to pay off. Hopefully the trellis will be finished before this is ready to go over the top. Also in this garden bed I've planted a few sunflower seeds and I've got a few of those starting to take off as well. Just here under my netted tent, I have a second apple tree. This one has actually got apples on it. The season before it didn't have any, so these are kind of alternating. It does have quite a bit of fruit on it, and if I left the net off, the birds would go to town on it. So I do want to try some of these apples. Now, I think it's um, in the Pink Lady uh, family. Uh, I'll have to check the name. I can't quite remember at this point. Also in this area, I've got rhubarb plants. This one is just starting to develop a flower. So I'll come around and cut that off. So it puts more energy into making the stalks. Now this plant here, I haven't actually split and it's quite a bit smaller than the one next to it. This rhubarb plant I did dig up and split and I spread about 15 plants around my swales. I do have a video on that and I'll leave a link to it. But I've noticed that this plant is a lot more vigorous in its growth than the one next to it that I haven't split. So you can multiply your plants, share them to family and friends or sell them. And by putting one of the pieces back in the ground in the original position, it gives you a really healthy looking plant. Moving along from the rhubarb, past the strawberry patch, we've got my lemon tree. Now this season, the lemon is really starting to kick in. We've got young fruit forming in between, and then we've got the fruit that you can actually harvest. So this lemon is really loving it in this position and is getting really laden with plenty of lemons. We've still got flowers coming as well. 
just next to the lemon tree, I've got my lime tree. I've still got plenty of limes in the freezer that I like to pull out when I need some limes for juice, but it's starting to form lots of new fruit for this season. And there's lots of baby fruit still coming. And it's also got plenty of fresh new growth coming on it. So my lime tree is doing pretty well. This here is my red currant plant, which gave heaps of fruit early in spring. And I've got that in the freezer. I'm still intent on making something with it, but I haven't as yet. It looks like it might have dried out a bit in the recent hot weather. So I'll have to be mindful of doing a bit more watering. But right next to it, I have my mandarin tree. My mandarin tree has been in for about three and a half years and last season was the first time I got some fruit from it and it was full of flowers earlier and now they're all turning into a uh, little fruit. So I'm hopeful for a really great harvest this season. Now just here is my orange tree that I planted as a memorial to my dog Ruby who passed away with a snake bite. And it started off going pretty well, but it's since struggled a little bit. I'm going to give it a bit more attention with compost and make sure I've got the water up to it. But it's got fairly yellow leaves, which indicates something's not quite right. So I'll have to work out what that is and give it a bit more love and make sure it survives. But the orange tree has got some beautiful zinnias around the edge some sweet alyssum that's starting to carpet over the ground. This little flower here is actually a variety of chrysanthemum, which is quite beautiful. And I'm still waiting for this hollyhock to get going. Now we're up here in the herb section of my garden where you can see it's pretty wild again. Lots of plants flowering and going to seed. I've got my rosemary bush here some thyme down here. There's some chives growing with their beautiful purple flowers. I do have lemon balm spreading into too many places so I'll have to deal with that. I did have a bit of a problem uh, with my sage and I've lost the sage. I planted some pineapple sage back in spring and it looks happy enough in the spot I've put it in. Some more thyme. I've got oregano that's now going to flower. Um, the lemon balm, of course, and just behind me here is some Vietnamese mint. This is the section where you could describe it as not so pretty. Lots of plants, including fennel and the Swiss chard. Uh, I think I had some brassicas seeding in here as well. My aim is to get a lot of these plants naturalised in the garden. So instead of just being an annual that you have to plant every year, the seeds are in the seed bank and when the time is right, they just start growing and producing food for you. So it's well worth putting up with a little bit of a mess so that plants will just flourish when it's their time. So while at the moment it's not that pretty to look at, it does have its purpose. And if you can just hold off tidying up the garden, it will really produce for you really well throughout the year. In autumn, I'll get in here, do a chop and drop, mulch to the surface of the soil to keep that moisture in, and that's when you'll find the seeds start to germinate. Now I do have quite a few sections in this garden that's still a little bit grassy and out of control. But what I want to do today is just focus on the area around my three gooseberry plants. So that's the, the first plant here. And we've got the second plant here. And then there is actually a third plant that is somewhere in amongst here. So that's why we've got to give it a little bit of attention today because I don't quite know where that's got to. Look, there we go, we've found it.
Now I'm going to take this lot up to the compost. It's got lots of grass seeds, seeds that I don't want in my kitchen garden. There's probably heaps already, but I'll put that all in my compost and that should um, deal with those seeds. Otherwise I would have just used it as mulch. And that's about as clear as I'd like it. I'm just going to add some compost around each of these plants and then top up with some wood chips. With clearing all the, the weeds and overgrowth, it uh, has revealed some fruits. I haven't had many gooseberries from my plants, but these ones look ripe and ready to harvest. Now the compost and wood chips will not only feed these plants and hopefully I'll get more than four gooseberries next year, but the wood chips and the compost will also help to retain moisture. If we have some rain, these plants will be able to utilize that moisture a lot longer than if we just let this garden be bare. Well, I hope you've enjoyed having a look around my summer kitchen garden. While it mightn't be at its prettiest, it certainly is still productive. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.